Hello, I'm Mike Bracken from Public Digital. When we talk about Agile, which is a software methodology, I often think about how we apply that in terms of public sector and particularly in public sector service delivery. Agile is really about the ability to have a rapid reaction to ever-changing user needs. The users of public services expect them to be as good, if not better, than many of the digital services they use in their personal lives. And having an agile setup, being able to change the service, the technology, the interface, and even the customer service very, very quickly means adopting a very uh, team-oriented way of changing every element of the service. That's what we mean by agile in the public sector. In the UK government, when I was running the government digital service, we applied Agile to our services, and particularly to 25 of the most important transactions in a programme from 2013 to 15. One of them was potentially the most important transaction in any democracy, it was the register to vote. And it was going to be a big waterfall IT project from a vendor, over 10 years of very, very great cost. And we applied a small, agile team to continually work at a new service, which was very, very simple, called Register to Vote. It, was, it looked and had the same design elements as many of the services we've already created. It was highly responsive to user needs and replaced many of the paper-based services that we'd had preceding it. The outcomes were stunning. In the 2016 election, three million people, more than the previous election, were able to register to vote. Evidence now suggests that that substantially affected the outcome of the election. Whatever you think about that outcome is irrelevant. What's important is that more people participated in the democratic process than otherwise would have been possible. And that's the benefit of working quickly with agile teams. As I said, Agile is a software methodology. How do you set up Agile well to work in the public sector? Well, the first thing you need is a team. A team of multidisciplined people working together. You can have policy people, operations, finance, technology, software, service design, user research. The optimum team is somewhere, I think, between seven and 12. It's a core team. And having those disciplines recognize that they are peers in the creation of a service, that they're not led by one particular discipline or the other, but they're working all focused on the needs of the user. Understanding the needs of the user is preeminent. Sometimes policy, which we all have to follow, sets out what the needs of the government are, but we fail to understand what the real needs of the user are in using those services, and indeed, what they demand from the government. So therefore, having user researchers understanding the user experience and constantly being able to change the service as user needs change over time is fundamental to the creation of modern public services. In Register to Vote, one piece of user research we found was the most simple thing. Prior to us starting the programme, the project was called IER, Independent Electoral Registration. Now, that's sort of government speak for what it does, but users don't go out and say, I'm going to independently, electorally register myself. They say, I'm going to register to vote. And the big piece of user research that we acted on was call the thing what it is. Use simple language. It's called register to vote. It's not about voting in the election. It's about the ability to be on the register that allows you to vote. So that's why it's called register to vote. Call the thing what it is, use simple English and build that into your domain. And that's what our user research told us to do. And as a result, Google in the UK on its homepage had a link to register to vote. I doubt if it would have said independent electoral registration on its homepage. This process, if you're about to undertake it, has some do's and don'ts. 
remember it is a really disciplined process that requires a high level of teamwork. There are three things to do. The first is focus on and invest in your team. Without a team focused on delivery, Agile is, I would say, impossible. The second thing is never ever lose sight of your user needs. Focus on your user needs and watch how users are using the services and listen to them when they're telling you what they need. And the third thing is to remember, it's not for every, everything. There are some services in the public sector, some projects, maybe building a motorway bridge, which aren't appropriate for Agile, so don't try and use it for anything, uh, for everything. The three things I would say don't do is don't fail to commit. If you're thinking of mixing Agile with another methodology, say waterfall, and trying to mix them two, you're committing to neither. Don't do that. If you're going to do Agile, fully commit to it and do it properly. Second don't is don't fail to stop. If things aren't working well enough for users, Agile is quite a fluid process. Don't persist month after month if you're not getting the results you want. It probably indicates a deeper user need or that one of the assertions behind the, on your assumptions is false. And the third thing to not do is don't forget to work in the open. Be really clear about your successes and failures because what you are doing now helps inform everybody else working in this way all around the world and these teams need to learn from each other. So do the brave thing and work in the open. Good luck.